word had spoken to me, but I, I mean, if I'm honest, I was in complete disbelief and I'm basically telling God, you have a dumb title for this conference. I don't want to use it. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of God is Not a Theory with Ken Fish. I'm your host, Grant Pemberton. And on today's episode, we have special guests, Ken Fish and Grant Pemberton. It's just <laughs> us. We are coming at you live, and we're here to have a conversation, Ken, about this year's incredible thing that the Lord is doing that you have felt him call uh, Ignition Conference. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. Um, most of our listeners would be aware that last year we held a conference in Nashville, Tennessee. I think it was technically in Franklin, but it's a difference without a meaning. Um, so we held a conference in Nashville and it was uh, called Fusion. Now that word I specifically got in prayer. It's a very strange name for a conference and I was really trying to avoid words like convergence, which is heavily used in Christian circles. Um, and I, I was praying about it because I, I knew, I knew I had, a, I had a burden from the Lord. Um, I, I would have said maybe even stronger an assignment to hold this conference. And so I didn't know what we were going to call it. And I was praying about it. And I, I kept getting stuck on convergence, like, everyone else is using and i didn't want to call it that it just seemed overused and uh, confusing that so many people were using that word so anyway um i got on an airplane and i can't remember where i was leaving or where i was going to but anyway i got on board the plane and i'm sitting there and the word of the lord came to me and he said call the conference fusion and as soon as I heard it, I was like, yeah, that's it. That's the word. That's what we're going to call this conference. And so uh, the subtitle of that conference, this is the 2023 conference last year in October, uh, was Fusion When Prophecy and Miracles Merge. And so we really focused heavily on miracles, not healing, miracles. And we focused on uh, prophecy. And we had some incredible ministry times. We had some amazingly good speakers. Um, I received five personal prophetic words from our various prophet speakers, and they all <laughs> they all fused. They all came together around a theme, which I'll come to in a moment. And uh, never mind what I got, because this isn't really ultimately about me. But but what happened out of all of it was that there were many, many people who were, uh, they, they are giving testimony even to this day, that they were activated and moved further along in their prophetic power, meaning the words they give hit with more power, uh, they're more impacting on people. Uh, they have more prophetic clarity, which is to say they have a clearer sense of what God is saying and when it's really God. Um, they also have more specificity in their prophesying. That's to say, maybe they weren't so great at giving specific detailed pieces of information, a la word of knowledge or word of wisdom. So they, they maybe are better at that. But everybody who's, it, that, I, that has contacted me has said, I'm, I'm operating at a higher level prophetically. And then uh, from the miracle side, uh, many people have reported either starting to see miracles on an ongoing basis, whether in their own lives, whether praying for other people, whether bringing miracles perhaps into a situation where it's not even a healing that's needed. It's some sort of a, I don't know, a breakthrough, just whatever that breakthrough is, but don't get stuck on healing. Do not get stuck on healing because there are many kinds of miracles in the Bible that have nothing to do with healing, multiplying loaves and fishes, uh, walking on water, etc. So these are the kinds of miracles that we're talking about that are beyond the realm of healing. Um, anyway, we, we barely finished the conference. In fact, I, I literally don't think we had finished it. And I had people saying, what, what are we, when are we doing it next year? And what are we going to talk about next year? And my initial response to everyone was, I don't know if we're going to do a conference next year. God didn't speak to me about next year. He told me to do this one. And so this could be the last one. 
So yeah, I think there I think I, I was I was one of those people because uh, I was like, hey, we should just tell them that of course we're doing another one of these. This was incredible. Um, but you're pretty serious about nope. You know the Lord didn't say to do a next one, so we're not even through with this one. So uh, yeah. So I don't know if it's because I was praying that the Lord would move you know, and speak to you and say, yes, we're doing another one. Maybe I can take all the credit for it. I don't know. Uh, the Lord... <laughs> Man, feels much. No, uh, yeah. But I remember, I mean, you were, you were serious about that. And, um, and so, yeah, I'm glad the, uh, the Lord spoke. So tell us how this came about because you, again, this is not, you were very intentional about saying, we're not just saying it, we're doing it again because this was a success. Yeah. Um, and so how, how did it come about? Um, so I, I started praying and initially I heard nothing and I thought, okay, so I don't think this is a thing, but I kept praying about it and I asked my intercessors to pray about it. And, you know, sometimes words form very rapidly uh, and it, it's helpful when they do that, when you're on a platform prophesying over a crowd, but other times prophetic words take some time to form. And I'll just use this as a teachable moment. Jeremiah at one point, the Jeremiah, uh, he had the elders of Israel come to him and they said, Jeremiah, do you have a word for the Lord from the Lord? And he said, I don't, but let me go inquire of the Lord. And it says that uh, Jeremiah went away to, you know, inquire of the Lord. Ten days later, the word of the Lord came to him. Now, this is Jeremiah, the prophet. This is not just some, you know, person who just got saved and is just learning about the gift of prophecy and thinks it's cool to get words for people. This is Jeremiah, the prophet. And it took him 10 days to get a word. And and I think it's a really important uh, point. I could, I mean, I could probably do the whole podcast just on that, but that's not our focus today. But there are times when securing a word from the Lord and getting the mind of the Lord is not an instantaneous process. And so this idea that, you know, we just pause for a moment. It's like, okay, I know what God's saying. I'm not saying that can't happen, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I've known those moments, but I'm also saying there's this other side of things where you and the Lord are working something out. So it took me a while to get closure on this. And of course, we held the conference in uh, kind of mid-October. I don't remember even the dates now, but it was mid-month October. And it took me till roughly early December before I was starting to think, yeah, we're supposed to do a conference, but what are we going to call it? And again, the I got this thought. It wouldn't say the word of the Lord came to me. That I use that term very specifically when when God's word comes to me and I know it's God's word. But sometimes the Lord leads us by dropping things into our spirit or giving us a thought that we can't shake. And we kind of work with that for a while. And so this was more along those lines. But anyway, after a bit, I got the word ignition. And I, I, I distinctly remember, and I've said this to several people, uh, when that came, I thought that is a really dumb uh, title for a conference. Who in the world would call a conference ignition? And some of our listeners would know that I am... Uh, at least by background, uh, scientifically inclined. I was planning to be involved in physics and study quantum mechanics and do something with that with my career. And I was completely disrupted from that by an open vision that came to me that in the October of my sophomore year uh, at Princeton. And it, I mean, it, it, it ruined my career plans forever. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not a practicing physicist now. I know more than the average bear, but I'm certainly no pro as a physicist. So fusion, to me, I understood what that was about. And, and the whole concept behind fusion was that when um, two hel hydrogen nuclei fuse, which means they are literally joined together, they don't just merge. This is a, this is a, a process at the subatomic sub level that releases vast quantities of energy. And it is... Uh, the process that powers the sun and all stars, as far as we know, anyway. Um, and it also powers things that we're, that are called quasars on the far edges of the universe. It is the single most powerful 
process in the universe as far as we know. There may be other things we haven't discovered, but at the current state of the art, the current state of technology, fusion is the most powerful process. <clears throat> so calling the conference fusion and talking about the, the merging or the fusing together of prophecy and miracles, the whole intention was, okay, something really powerful and dr dramatic is going to come out of this. And as I said, I had five prophetic words given to me, a couple of them from the stage by our speakers. The others were in private. But they were five prophetic words that said that what happened at Fusion would release like a shockwave that would ultimately affect every church in America. Now, that's a small, insignificant word. Um, and of course, it's easy to talk, but it it seems as though that's underway. I'll just say that. Yeah. So um, I don't want to I don't want to make it more than it is. I'm certainly not trying to brag. I'm not trying to put any spotlight on me. I'm just trying to give our listeners a little bit of context for what happened last fall in Nashville. Yes. And because you don't have a proclivity towards bragging, I will, uh, cause I can brag on you, um, and on this thing, but it all, I mean, the speakers have said it, everyone has said it. This was a, a watershed moment. Uh, we all felt like it, we all felt like it was special. And I know I've heard from a ton of people who were very upset to, that they missed it. So, um, so then now here we are in, in the path of this shockwave, so to speak. And then what would be, uh, as we're moving from fusion, why are we calling it ignition? What, what is happening now? And, and what are you seeing happen, uh, for this conference? Right. So we did the fusion conference. I'm praying we get to December and I'm feeling like, okay, this is probably the Lord. Again, the word of the Lord hasn't come to me, but I'm feeling that, yeah, this is this is the leading of God. I, I think we I think we need to do another conference. And so, you know, by now we're invested in the process of securing a facility. And um, I'm talking with the uh, Orbis Ministries team about, OK, what's this going to take and all, just all the planning stuff. And, and there's a fair amount that goes into this. It's, I mean, it's one thing to be led of the spirit, but you, sometimes you still have to plan. So anyway, I'm praying about, go ahead. Can I stop you? Because I think it'd be really interesting for some people, a little bit of a, an aside. Can you just briefly talk about the difference between a leading and a word? Because you've, you've referenced that a couple of times. And I know if anyone's listening like me, they're going to want some insight into like, tell me the difference. What's the difference? Well, when I have leading, um, I have I would I would call it a burden, and it's something that settles from roughly my head forehead down to my chest, and it, it, it it's 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 mild, but it's tactile, and it kind of weighs on me and draws me to whatever it is that I'm being drawn to, and and I have a sense of that. One of the words for glory in Hebrew is kavod which is also the word for heavy. So there's a weight to it, but I don't want to make it sound like it's an unbearable weight. It's just, it's almost like a pressure, but there's some kind of a heaviness you're carrying in inside of you, or for me, it's inside of me. I don't know, maybe others experience it other ways. And so, so that's kind of leading. But when the word of the Lord comes to me, it is a, here is the voice of God and he's speaking to me. And generally for me, when I hear the voice of God, this way, when I say the word of the Lord came to me, I didn't do anything to gin it up. I'm just doing whatever I'm doing. I could be worshiping. I could be doing dishes. I could be putting gasoline in the car. I could be doing laundry. Um, but suddenly this word comes. And for me, it's usually back here on the back of behind me on the little bit to the right side of the midline of my head. So just about here. And it can wrap or envelop or sometimes it'll be up here in the front not back here so it could wrap around or it may be here or here but that's 95 percent of the time when the word of the lord comes to me but i hear a voice inside my head speaking to me it's subaudible, but it is unquestionably uh verbiage and it is as clear to me as what you are hearing me say right now that's perfect. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to derail us, but uh, I know Pete, I love to hear how people get revelation and it's so helpful for me. So thanks. All right. So, so you're doing all the planning and you're getting Orbis involved and you're um, 
I'm picking this back up where I interrupted. Uh, and, and so you're doing that. And so now continue with the story, the tale of ignition. So I'm praying about this thing and I'm like, Lord, what are we going to call this? I wake up and I, from memory, it was right near Christmas. And I, I actually bookmarked and saved the story. And so the story was released on December the 20th, 2023. So this is right near Christmas, but not quite Christmas time. So here is a, here is an article or a story from CNN.com. Now, I know a lot of people don't like CNN because it's the mainstream media, but it is generally deemed to be at least a news source to think about and reckon with. Whether or not you like them, you need to reckon with what they say because they're at least believed to be big boys. And so the title of this article is Scientists Successfully Replicate historic nuclear fusion breakthrough three times. And it was, this story was updated um, the next day on December 21, 2023. Uh, and it's about a four minute read. So I'm going to read you this story. And if people want to go find it, you need to go to the CNN website. But anyway, here's what it says. Scientists in California shooting nearly 200 lasers at a cylinder holding a fuel capsule the size of a peppercorn have taken another step in the quest for fusion energy, which if mastered could provide the world with a near limitless source of clean power. Last year on a December morning, so it's referring to 2022, but this didn't get reported until 2023, a year later, which as we're making this broadcast, is about four months ago is when this story came out. But the events in question happened 16 months ago. So last year on a December morning, scientists at the National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California managed in a world first to produce a nuclear fusion reaction that released more energy than it used in a process called ignition. Now, I'm gonna finish reading the story but let me just say, when I when this came up in my newsfeed, I'm interested in stuff like this. Ignition was not in the headline banner. I just read it because I'm interested in stuff like this because I was interested in physics and I thought that was going to be my career. And so when I finished that second paragraph and I read that word ignition, I was like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. so the Lord had spoken to me, but I, I mean, if I'm honest, I was in complete disbelief. And I'm basically telling God, you have a dumb title for this conference. I don't want to use it. Mm. So let me just explain what I just read to everybody. For more than 60 years, the physics community has been trying to find a way to create sustainable fusion on Earth. Because if they can do it, we will never run out of energy. It will literally solve the energy crisis. It will solve global warming if it really exists. It will be the end of all of those problems. And it has no radioactivity or other externalities and side effects like nuclear fission, which is what runs our normal power plants now, mm. our nuclear power plants. Okay, so let's go on with the story. So they've been looking for this for 60 years. And in late 22, they, they, they had it happen, but they didn't announce the story until late 23, approximately two months after our fusion conference. All right, let's go on with the story. Now they say they have successfully replicated ignition at least three times this year, according to a December report from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. This marks another significant step in what could one day be an important solution to the global climate crisis driven primarily by the burning of fossil fuels. For decades, scientists have attempted to harness fusion energy, essentially recreating the power of the sun on Earth. After making their historic net energy gain last year, the next important step was to prove that the process could be replicated. And so the story goes on, replicated this process, and it says, um, I'm, I'm jumping several paragraphs, the energy produced in December 22, uh, 2022 was small. It took around two megajoules of power uh, to power the reaction, in other words, to make it work, which released a total of 3.15 megajoules which is enough to boil about 10 kettles of water. But it was sufficient to make it a successful ignition and to prove that laser fusion could create energy. Since then, the scientists have done it several more times. On July 30, a laser delivered a little over two megajoules to the target, which resulted in 3.88 megajoules of energy, their highest yield achieved to date, according to the report. Two subsequent experiments in October also delivered 
net gains. And so it kind of goes on, talks about the investment by the U.S. Department of Energy, et cetera. All right. But since then, history has moved on. So now I'm about to give you an update from the BBC. Now, your the magic number was 3.15 uh, megajoules. And so that was enough, they said, to uh, you know boil 10 kettles of water. That's not enough to power the world. But it, it the point is, there's more energy coming out than going in. And that's not been done before. And that was what happened in December of 22. But now here's a story from the BBC that I just uh, captured. And this was released only seven days ago. And it says nuclear fusion power plant reaches major milestone. A company says it has reached a major milestone in its quest to design a power plant capable of producing energy from nuclear fusion. This company is known as First Light Fusion in Yarnton, Oxfordshire. And it has increased the distance a projectile is fired into the fuel by more than 10 times. And it goes on and talks about what's happening with this company that's trying to scale up this process called ignition into something more than just a, a lab research. And then this story comes out uh, just a couple days ago. And this is about a nuclear fusion reactor in South Korea. It ran at 100 million degrees centigrade for a record-breaking 48 seconds, and it's known as K-Star. Um, and so anyway, this was a, a major breakthrough where basically the Korean scientists have taken uh, this technology and they are scaling it up beyond what we were able to do. This produced like, I can't remember the exact number. It's in the range of 48 megajoules. I can't remember the exact number, but it's in that range. So we went from 3.15 megajoules to 48 megajoules, and we've got a 100 million degree reactor here on the planet Earth. Now, this is hotter than the center of the sun. And the way they do it is by creating a magnetic bottle to hold this thing called plasma. It's the fourth state of matter. Matter can exist as a gas, a liquid, or a solid, or plasma, which is when it's ionized and it doesn't hold together like a normal solid would. And so when it's ionized, the electrons are stripped away, and this is what allows nuclei to fuse. And so what's happened is just since December, uh, we did it in California. The Brits have done it in Oxfordshire, which is a the equivalent of a state over there. I think they have a different name for it, but it's the same idea. And now the uh, the South Koreans have a K-Star reactor that's doing this. And again, this has been the, the holy grail of physics for more than 60 years, and it's starting to happen. Now, we're not going to be talking about um, the scientific aspects. I had to really stress that when we did the fusion conference, because a lot of people were put off and they said, you know, I can't, I, I mean, I don't know physics and I, this, this intimidates me. But we had it. We had a, a a guy with a PhD and a postdoc in physics at Fusion. He'll be there again at Ignition. He'll explain the science. And what I'm really after is what can we learn about the supernatural from the world of the natural? And the fact that what's happening now is there's a scaling of fusion reactivity in a safe way, and it has the ability to power our Earth essentially forever with no none of the problems that we thought of. There's no air pollution. The only byproduct is water. That's it. And it's potable water. So we may be creating more drinking water for parts of the world that need it. Um, it can't explode. It has no radioactivity. And the fact that they're scaling this up and there's even commercial ventures that are working with this technology now tells you that we are at a breakthrough moment scientifically. But since we had these prophetic words about what our fusion conference was going to do for the church, if the natural speaks of the invisible, then we are at a breakthrough moment spiritually, and God is releasing immense power into the church. I don't know what all that's going to look like. It will surely include miraculous power. But God is releasing miraculous power into the church alongside of prophecy, which is a catalyst for miracles. That was one of the things we discussed at the conference last year, such that we should start to see this very idea propagate. And hitherto, fusion was something that, at least on planet Earth, it only existed in one thing, one place. That would be when you set off a hydrogen bomb and you create fusion, and it's the most destructive uh, weapon that's ever been created. And um, when Robert Oppenheimer, some people on our podcast here would have seen the movie Oppenheimer, when they detonated the hydrogen bomb, Oppenheimer, who was the lead physicist on the project, he quoted a line from the Bhagavad Gita, which is a Hindu scripture. 
and it's not like, you know, we're going Hindu here, but what, what Oppenheimer said was he said, now I am become death, the destroyer of all worlds, because he realized that the power that had been unleashed in a hydrogen bomb was beyond anything anyone could imagine. They predicted that it would be a one a megaton yield, the, the initial um, hydrogen bomb called Mike, that was its code name. When they detonated Mike, they expected one megaton of yield, one million tons of TNT, and it ran away to almost 10 megatons. It was literally out of control and they had no idea what they had done. They thought maybe it would consume the atmosphere and it would destroy the entire earth. Well, thank God that didn't happen. But the point is it was such a powerful process. And up until this time now, where they are creating sustainable ignition process, which is, it, it, it occurs in the nanosecond after fusion. The fact that this is now being done in at least three countries, there are others that are working on it, and I think the Indians have now done it too, um, it tells us that, that we're moving forward with this, and it's very consistent, it's congruent, it's not identical, because on the one hand, we're talking about science and hard physics, and on the other hand, we're talking about spirituality and the way the spirit of God is be, is moving in the earth. So it's a congruence. It's not an identical. Um, it's not an identical concept. But the fact that this is happening in the natural is indicative of the prophetic words that were given to us about the impact our fusion conference would have. And I believe we are now. And because the Lord gave me this word, even though I was disbelieving at first. I believe we are now coming to a place spiritually where we are at the point of ignition, where we can, and our subtitle to the ignition conference is creating a sustainable move of God. If they can create sustainable fusion, we will have an unlimited source of power for the earth. If we can create a sustainable move of God, instead of just episodic outpourings and revivals, what we will have is a sustainable move of God that can propagate and go throughout the earth. Well, wow. that's exciting. I love I'm, it. I love, I love the, uh, yeah, I love the prophetic significance. I mean, even of like bringing the power of the sun to the earth, you know, heaven on earth and all of these sort of things. So yeah, I think that's, um, that's exciting. So, uh, let me ask you some, you know, some, some other questions when, where, and who, right? So when, when is this conference going to be, where is it going to be? And, uh, who do you think will be there? All right. So the dates are going to be October 3, 4, and 5. And we're going to be in Brentwood, Tennessee at Bethel World Outreach Church. Um, our registration and sign up is going live on April the 16th. Um, so as we're recording this roughly a week hence, um, we will have a super early bird price that will run through the end of April. And then we'll go to our early bird price which will go for a while before we go to regular pricing. Uh, this facility has generous capacity, but uh, it's not unlimited. And given that we have a super early bird pricing option, I would encourage anybody who's interested in this to sign up early, save as much money as you can. We have room blocks reserved with five hotels that are close to the church. A couple of them are walking distance. Uh, the, all of them are within a mile. So, um, you know, it's, it, it won't be hard to get to and from our sessions. And we've got a, an, an incredible lineup of speakers. I'll be one of them. Uh, Grant, you're one of them. You know that. Uh, we've got Putty Putman, who was, I think, probably our most uh, favored speaker last year. He was the physicist. He has both a PhD in theoretical physics and quantum mechanics um, and a postdoc. But he left all of that in a very high paying, multiple six figure job in order to become pastor because he was so fascinated by the working of the Holy Spirit. And so Putty will be talking to us about really what is ignition and uh, sustainability uh, from a spiritual standpoint. And we're not just talking about personal sustainability. That's an important topic, but this is about how we sustain moves of God. So he'll be uh, focusing on that. We've got Abner Bosky, who's been on this podcast, and he's going to be talking about um, God's role for the Jews in the end times and why replacement theology is actually a bankrupt theology. And it's a little bit like, you know, in science, you get theories that you test out and if they don't work, you abandon them and look for new theories. Well, replacement theology is a theological theory that I think it's time to abandon it. 
and Avner will be talking to us about um, really why uh, sustaining a move of God requires that we incorporate a proper perspective on the Jews and their role in the end times. And he's probably one of the best in the world to address this topic. I can only think of maybe two others or maybe three who would be comparably gifted and equipped to address this subject. I'm super excited to have Avner uh, be speaking to us. And Grant, I think you had Avner speak at your church recently, did you not? Yeah, he came. It was incredible. Uh, he's he's so intelligent and so funny. And uh, I tell you, he said something that just sort of just hit me up the side of the face. He said, um, Islam is the leading uh, religion of replacement theology. I was like, man, that's a that's a good quote. So yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be a lot of fun uh, to have on uh, to have on the stage. So it's exciting. Right. Okay, so we got Abner. Um, we're gonna have Derek Morphew. He's a South African uh, associated with the King uh, Vineyard Movement, and he he's been around the Vineyard forever. He knew Lonnie Frisbee back when Lonnie was uh, traveling in South Africa and ministering back when he was alive. Um, like many of us, Derek's getting on <laughs> in life but he's far from over the hill. He's going to be teaching on the kingdom of God and spiritual gifts. Because again, the, what we're doing is we're talking about building a sustainable move of God. What are building blocks that are required, what are necessary in order to have a proper sustained move of God? So Derek's going to address those topics. Then we have Cindy Jacobs, who needs no introduction. She's been on this podcast. Cindy's one of the most powerful governmental level prophets on the planet. She regularly meets with heads of state. I've watched Cindy Jacobs give prophetic words that are 28 standard deviations off the mean. And you think this is insane. How could anyone even prophesy this? And I watch those words land. I think Cindy, well, arguably anyway, I, I don't say, I don't think it's undisputed, but I think arguably she has some of the most prophetic cred in the world. And so she'll be addressing us. And she's going to be talking about um, prophecy to shift nations. And she's also going to talk about prayer. So uh, our next uh, big prophetic voice is Chris Reed, who also needs no introduction. He's been on this podcast and he is one of the leading voices of prophecy in the United States and beyond today. Um, his messages are not settled yet, but Chris will be with us and he'll be ministering. Then we've got Dr. Jack Deere, who was with us last year. And Jack is going to talk about topics that he doesn't always speak about anymore. So Jack Deere commonly talks about the voice of God and being surprised by the voice of God and the power of the Spirit and being surprised by the power of the Spirit. Um, I've asked him to dust off his... Uh, seminary professor, whatever, chops, clothes, whatever the right word is. I've asked him to do that. Um, and he is going to teach on biblical inerrancy, why you can believe in it as one message and why you should believe in it as another message. And this will feed into some further discussion around gifts of the spirit, anointing, and how anyone can step into this, no matter what your theological background may be. Um, we're going to have R.T. Kendall, who is going to teach on word and spirit, meaning the joining of word and spirit. And he has a new book out, which could offend some, on how the charismatic movement, which has always thought of itself as the Isaac, may actually be in the process of becoming an Ishmael. It's a, it's a tough message, but it's a good message. It needs to be heard. Uh, you might want to think about picking up his book on this topic prior to coming to the conference. Uh, but R.T. Kendall is one of the most profound uh, speakers in the world. He used to pastor Westminster Chapel in London. He was the pastor of Paul Kane, and, um, and he was involved in, of course, dealing with Paul after Paul's fall. But R.T. has, uh, he was a very close friend of John Paul Jackson's, and he brings a kind of wisdom and experience in leading as a leader of of people in a congregation pastoring people who are prophets um that well i don't know where we could find somebody else who's as qualified to do this at this time so uh, we have all of these people and then we have a couple of others we have uh, joseph garlington 
who is a prophet, pastor, bishop uh, from Pittsburgh, and uh, his name would be known to many of our followers. We also have Jeremy Nelson, who um, I think did an incredible job ministering in healing and miracles at our fusion conference. He was one of our most popular speakers. And we have someone who um, is not well known to our group. And, you know, last year we had a mystery speaker. This person, this person could be our mystery speaker this year. And for that reason, I'm not going to say who they are, but I will say this. It's a woman and she comes from an Arab nation and she is an incredible prophetess. And she's going to be talking about the person of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. And all I can say is stand by. The room will probably explode when she starts ministering. So we may add one more uh, person that's pending, but we're not sure they're going to be able to make it. Uh, this is going to be an incredible lineup of speakers. And again, we're moving beyond the, the moment of fusion into the nanosecond and beyond of ignition that creates, creates sustainability. And so we're using this same kind of physical paradigm, literal earthly scientific paradigm of ignition to talk about how do we build a sustainable move of God. And I've already given you an outline of what some of the topics are that will be discussed to address how do we sustain this and keep moving in this direction so it doesn't fizzle and die, so it doesn't become irrelevant, so it doesn't become goofy um so it doesn't become heretical yeah. and i know i don't know that this is all the building blocks we may actually next year 2025 do a third part where we pick up some more of them i don't know it'll kind of depend on how this one lands and you know i'll probably have to go back to the lord and pray some more but anyway that gives you an overview go ahead and ask me some questions about it <laughs> yeah that's an incredible lineup uh that's going to be extremely exciting and it, i'm assuming it'll be very similar to last year's where it wasn't like people flew in flew out like people were were staying the speakers were, were staying around which is a pretty unique uh experience there was um will there be workshops uh like there were uh last year is that the plan yep we'll have general sessions we'll have workshops and we're thinking about doing some kind of a special event on saturday evening it's not settled but some of our folks who attended said gosh we would have loved to have had a time to hang out and just sort of chat and whatever so if we can find the right facility and we're, again we're working on this so please nobody hold me to it right yet i'm just telling you what we're thinking about i'm trying to whet your appetite a little bit um, we may have some sort of a dinner type reception and ask our speakers all to come so people can mix and mingle with them and uh, it, we also have a chance for fellowship among the people who attend. Now, seating is, again, limited. We have a, a generously sized facility. I, I think we can I think we can seat up to 1,500 in the facility. And we will probably have streaming. We think we've worked out the technical problems from last year. Uh, so for those who can't physically be there. But, but honestly, everybody who went or who watched last year said, you needed to be in the room. You really needed to be in the room. You want to be in the room. So if there is any way to get to Nashville, October three to five, you want to be there. I think this is going to be, if anything, more exciting than last year's. And last year's was incredible. Even our speakers, every single one of them said to me one of two things, either A, this is the best conference I have ever spoken at, or B, it's the best conference I've spoken at in the last decade. Every single speaker told me that. And I think this will be better. Yeah, I think so too. For no other reason than we kind of have, uh, we've, we've worked some kinks out and, um, and, and it's, we have some things that we're building on. And so it's very exciting. I think it's going to be incredible. So this is going to be opened up for early bird pricing uh, April super 16th. Early. Super, super, super duper early bird pricing April 16th. Um, we just to let everyone know last year, we didn't get the word out this soon. Uh, we started getting the word out kind of late on, uh, on this podcast. Most of the people came from hearing from about it on this podcast and we got fairly close to filling up the room. Good. Uh, and we didn't do it this, this much in time. So 
I'm expecting this thing to sell out um, pretty quickly. So uh, I would suggest you uh, you get your tickets and you, you get them in. And um, I think it'll be well worth it. Uh, and I know that uh, there's a lot of things going on. Um, there'll be the similar kind of ministry times that we had last time where, you know, a, a lot of the speakers were ministering simultaneously do you see that being a part of this as well the pace that we will have our, our speakers ministering together again that that fusion theme is carrying forward we're just calling it ignition because that's the next stage of a fusion reaction um so yeah I, I imagine we'll have joint ministry uh we'll have workshops uh for those who you know want to dive into those and we're going to run uh um, three different zones for workshops this year not just two so we'll have capability for more workshops than we did have. Um, and, you know, we we did a fair amount of personal ministry and private ministry as well, and had lots of healings and lots of personal words given to people. Um, and I've gotten tons and tons of reports of those words coming good, or of the healing sticking. So again, our emphasis is more on miracles than healing, but that's not to say we're not going to do healing, or we're not going to pray for healing, or that healing doesn't matter. We're just trying to differentially emphasize a gift that doesn't yet emphasize very much. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, all right. Anything else we need, we should, should know before we, uh, we move on, where can they get these early bird super duper early bird? So the tickets? website is, um, uh, kingdom ignition.org one word kingdom ignition.org. And again, the site is not live. Um, I don't know if you'll get a dummy or a test site if you try to go there right now, but on April 16, it will go live. Registration will be ready. And uh, the super early bird will only last until April the 30th. After that, the price is going to go up. There will still be a discount from the door price, assuming that there's any seats to be sold at the door. Uh, but But if you want the absolute cheapest price that you will ever see on this conference, you have to sign up between April 16 and April 30. And once April 30 comes, there you will not see that price again. I'm not saying it to browbeat you. I'm not saying it to uh, try to guilt manipulate you or any of those things that people do. Paul said, we have renounced shameful and deceptive practices. I have too, because Paul said we should. Um, but I am giving you fair warning that you've got about two weeks to you know pull the trigger. So if you want to wait till your credit card cycle closes and then you know buy on the next cycle. So you've got 30 more days to make the payment for the ticket or something. Great. Go ahead and do that. But after the 30th, the price goes up and, you know, we're trying to make this available to those who were friends, our loyal supporters, those who came last year and loved it and want to do it again. Um, we're trying to give you the first shot at you know, getting in the door. I doubt we'll fill the whole building during super early bird, but I can't guarantee we won't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have, no doubt that we're selling this thing out. Uh, also, just to let you guys know, uh, if you're in the Nashville area, uh, Ken is going to be coming uh, to Worship City Alliance uh, the very first uh, Wednesday, which is also the first day of May. And um, to to talk about this further and to deliver a message, that's at My Sending Church, uh, Unite Church. Uh, that'll be happening there. And, um, and so you can come out and join uh join us there at 9 30 uh wednesday may 1st to hear more about uh this uh conference and all of the things that are getting ready to happen so we hope to see you there can anything else to say before we wrap this up i don't think so um hope to see many of you there and thanks for following a podcast yeah yeah thank you all for listening thank you for suggestions we're still trying to uh to answer all the questions and create special episodes around uh, all of the things that you all have uh, have asked us to talk about. So stay tuned. Much more coming down the pike uh, this year from God is Not a Theory. We're excited about this conference. We're believing for incredible things. And so we're looking forward to being with you there. Ken, thanks for joining us. You all, thank you for joining us. And we'll be back here uh, next week, same time, same place, with another episode of God is Not a Theory with Ken Fish. If you are interested in exploring courses with us at Orbis School of Ministry, click on the link in the description of this podcast or go to orbissm.com. You can also send any school-related inquiries to our registrar, Joe McKay at joe at orbisministries.org. 
That's J-O at orbisministries.org. Lord had spoken to me, but I, I mean, if I'm honest, I was in complete disbelief, and I'm basically telling God, you have a dumb title for this conference. I don't want to use it.